One of the most valuable features of iRISE is the ability to incorporate and display interactive data as part of your simulation. While a number of widgets can be used to display dynamic data, for this tutorial we'll be focusing on the iRISE table widget. We are going to set up a simple data table that displays customer records from a data sheet. First, let's create the data table. When you add a table widget to a page in iRISE, you're presented with the option of choosing a normal table or a data table. Normal tables are for displaying static content. Note that you can specify a number of columns and rows when creating a normal table. Switching to the Data tab, you can see that you no longer have the option of specifying a number of rows. The reason for this will become clear in a moment. For this example, we'll specify three columns and a header. Our new data table has two rows. You'll notice at a glance that the second row has a red border, which is your first indication that it is a data row. If you click a cell on the data row, the Properties panel contains your second indication. Before we configure the data row, let's set up our header. You can add any content you want to table cells in iRISE. In this case, we'll just add a text widget to each column header. For each cell, just double click and type. Let's also apply some quick formatting changes to make the header row stand out. Now let's prepare the data row. Displaying data in iRISE requires that you add a placeholder for each data field, which can take the form of a text widget, an image widget, or any user input widget. For data tables, the most common placeholder is a text widget, which is what we'll use here. Brackets are commonly used when creating text placeholders. Now we need a data source. For data tables, this always takes the form of a data sheet. Let's create a data sheet by importing one of the sample data sheets that ships with iRISE. We'll call this data sheet Customers. To import a sample data sheet, we'll click the Import CSV icon, which defaults to the directory that contains the samples. After choosing the CSV file we want, the data sheet is automatically populated with the data we need. Now that we have our data source, we can connect it to our data table. First, we need to add a Get Record widget, which we can do by dragging the customer's data sheet to the canvas on the left side of the page. Note that there are three types of Get Record widgets. In this case, we want to use the default All Records option. If we wanted to filter the records flowing into the data table, we could do so with one of the other two options, but we'll save that for another video. There are two ways to map the data flow from the Get Record widget to the data table. The simplest is to drag the record widget and release it on each of the text widget placeholders in turn, selecting the appropriate field when prompted. This results in a red data flow line labeled with the field that you just mapped. For data tables with a large number of columns, it's better to drag the record widget and release it on the left edge of the data row to pull up the data flow editor. This can be a little tricky, but gets easier with practice. The data flow editor streamlines the process of mapping your data flow, and is one of the reasons that naming fields descriptively is so important. The other benefit of the data flow editor is it results in a single data flow line, which we refer to as collapsed or summary data flow. Let's test our data flow. Success. Each record in the data sheet generated a new row in the data table with the appropriate values displayed in each column. Once you've mastered data tables, there are many other applications of data sheets for you to explore. Thanks for watching.